Okay, so what we're going to discuss for this video is the crimes against national security, particularly Article 114 or Treason. So here are the elements. Kailangan po lahat ng elements nandyan. Otherwise, the crime of treason will not prosper. Pag wala po nung isa, hindi magiging liable yung tao for the crime of treason. So kailangan natin isa-isa yun. But for board purposes, kadalasan po kasi pinagsasama-sama sa isang question yung treason, rebellion, kudita, sedition. Okay? So kung medyo nalilito ka, para mas madali mo matandaan yung treason, i-relate po natin siya sa salitang traidor. So kung makikita mo, yung first two letters nagsisimula sa T tsaka sa R, Ganon din po yung traitor na sisimula sa T tsaka sa R. So meaning to say, pagdating sa treason, meron po diyang pagkatraidor. Now, punta po tayo sa elements. Sabi rito sa letter B, there must be a war. Meron daw pong gera. For example, may gera po between America and China. Then here comes P a Pilipino, kumampi po siya sa China. Ulitin ko, may gera po between America and China. Here comes now letter P. Pilipino, kumampi po siya sa China. Question, is P liable for the crime of treason? The answer for that is no. Why? Because although there is a war, hindi naman po kasali yung Philippines. Eh. May ang sabi rito, There is a war in which the Philippines is involved. So dahil hindi kasali ang Pilipinas sa gera, P is not liable for the crime of treason. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Let us proceed to another element. What if, for example, there is a war in which the Philippines is involved? For example, there is a war between Philippines and China. Then later on, A, an American citizen who is a resident here in the Philippines. Ibig sabihin, dito siya nakatira. Pero American citizen siya. Dito siya nakatira sa Pilipinas. Committed an acts of treason. Question, can we punish A for the crime of treason? E di ba nga American citizen si A? The answer for that question is yes, because based on the first element, that is the offender is a Filipino, tulad ni Picanina, or resident alien, tulad ni A na binigay kong sa akin. Okay? So, treason can be committed by a Filipino or a resident alien. So, A is liable for the crime of treason because he committed an acts of treason. Sir, ano po ba yung acts of treason? Ang acts of treason po ay ito po yun. Makikita dito sa element letter C. Ano po yung sinasabi dyan? That the offender levies war against the government or adhere to its enemies giving them aid or comfort. Dyan po sa acts of treason, pwede po natin siyang i-enumerate sa dalawa. First one is Levi's War. And the second one is adhering to its enemy, giving them aid or comfort. Ang haba, no? Paiksin na lang natin. Adhere plus aid. So punta muna tayo rito sa Levi's. Pag sinabing Levi's War, that is what? That is enlisting of men or assembling of men for military purposes. So meaning to say, bumubuo ka raw po ng grupo ng kalalakihan para maging kawal, para maging sundalo. Na alin? Na lalaban mismo sa sundalo ng gobyerno. So if that is your act, then there is a war, then definitely you're liable for the crime of treason. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Example, si A, huwag si A kasi Amerikano yun. Si P, Filipino. Si P, Filipino. 
tinawag niya yung kanyang mga kagrupo. No? Binuo niya yung mga grupo na yan for the purpose of defeating the AFP. No? Yung mga army natin dito, during war in which the Philippines is involved, bumuo ng grupo si P. No? Na kung saan ang purpose noon ay kalabanin mismo yung mga sundalo ng Pilipinas. Question, is P liable for the crime of treason? The answer for that is yes because he levies war. Bumuo siya ng grupo. So that is the meaning of device. Let us now proceed to the second act. That is adhering plus aid. Pag sinabi natin adhere, that is sympathy. Nakikisimpatya ka. Pag sinabi natin aid, tumutulong ka. So kailangan magkasama po yung pagkasimpatya mo saka yung pagtulong mo. Example. Si P, Filipino, During war in which the Philippines is involved, for example, there is a war between Philippines and China. Here comes now P. Kada tinatamaan yung sundalo ng China, kada tinatamaan yung sundalo ng mga Chinese soldier, nagre-react tong si P. Sabi niya, Diyos ko po, kawawa naman tong mga Chinese soldier. Awang-awa ako sa kanila, nakikisimpatya ako. After that, wala na po siyang din. Question, is P liable for the crime of treason? The answer for that is no. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, there must be concurrence of adhere and aid. Adhere plus aid. Hindi pa pwedeng adherence lang. Hindi pwedeng simpatya lang. Kailangan may tulong kang ginawa. Another example. Si P, Filipino, There is a war between Philippines and China. Then later on, ang ginawa po ni P, binigyan niya ng pagkain, yung Chinese soldier. Binigyan niya ng bala. E kaya naman pala binigyan ni P, yung mga Chinese soldier, ng pagkain at bala dahil may nakatutok na baril sa kanya. Tinututukan din siya ng another Chinese soldier. Question, is P liable for the crime of treason? The answer for that is no. Why? Because although P aided, tinulungan niya, yung Chinese soldier, he did not adhere to the Chinese soldier. Hindi naman siya nakisimpat siya. Tinutukan lang siya ng firearm sa ulo. Kapag di niya sinunod yun, baka siya ang ngayari. So, sinunod niya. So, anong very good example dito? Sir? Very good example dito, si P, Filipino, or si A, resident alien, during war in which the Philippines is involved. For example, there is a war between Philippines and China. And later on, eto pong offender, si A or si P, No? binigyan po niya ng bala. Okay? At the same time, nung tinamaan po yung Chinese soldier ng ating mga sundalo, pinatuloy niya sa bahay. Ginamot niya yung sugat. Okay? So in that case, dahil po tinulungan nila yung Chinese soldier, and there is adherence. Kasi nakikisimpat siya talaga sila. Wala namang pumipilit sa kanila. At the same time, tinulungan nila. Ginamot nga yung sugat. Eh. Pinakain pa. Binibigyan ng bala. In that scenario, that is a clear case of treason. Therefore, PNA is liable for the crime of treason. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, let us proceed further. Please take note that treason can be proved only by any of the following means. First one is judicial confession. And the second one is two witness rule. Wala tayong pagtatalunan sa judicial confession because that is the direct acknowledgement of guilt while the person is inside the court. Ibig sabihin, 
Si P, Filipino, nag-commit ng acts of treason during war in which the Philippines is involved. Then later on, during trial, inamin niya na talagang kasalanan niya. So that is a one way in order for you to convict a person for the crime of treason. Nagkakaroon po tayo ng problema doon sa two-witness rule. Ano ba yung sinasabi ng two-witness rule? Ang sinasabi po ng two-witness rule is that You cannot convict a person. You cannot prove a crime of treason unless there is or there are two witnesses who will testify against that person. Ano yun sa Tagalog? Kailangan po. Kung ayaw niyang aminin yung ginawa niyang treason, kailangan at least meron kang dalawang titistigo laban sa kanya. Example. Si P, Filipino, nag-commit ng treason. Inaresto ng pulis. Pag-aresto ng pulis sa kanya, sino nag-testify? Yung pulis. Question. Can the judge convict P for the crime of treason on the basis of the sole testimony of the police officer? The answer for that is no. Why? Because in order for us to convict a person or to prove a crime of treason, there must be compliance with the two witness rule. Kailangan dalawang witness ang detestigo sa kanya. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Tinatanong sa board? Possible question. Now, nasabi ko na po kanina to. Pag sinabing treason, ang sabi rito, That is the breach of allegiance. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng allegiance, sir? Pag sinabing allegiance, that is your obligation of fidelity and obedience. Palalim ng palalim, sir. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng fidelity? Katapatan. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng obedience? Pagsunod. Okay? Kung tayo ay eh, sa ating mga relationship, no? kung gusto mo ng katapatan, ng iyong kapartner, ang tawag doon, faithfulness. Pero pagdating sa gobyerno, ang tawag sa katapatan natin ay allegiance. Bakit kailangan ng allegiance? Bakit kailangan maging tapat tayo at sumunod tayo sa gobyerno? Tulad ng resident alien, hindi naman siya citizen ng Pilipinas. Bakit kailangan niya maging tapat dito sa bansa natin? Why? Because While, resi while residing here in the Philippines, no, he enjoys some benefit and protection given by the government. ba? Diba? Pag may mga foreigner tayo rito, pinoproteksyonan niya ng mga polis natin. Okay? Hindi yan basta-basta pwede na lang saktan. Otherwise, you will be held liable for hurting that foreigner or for violating their rights. So dahil protektado sila dito sa bansa natin, eh nararapat lamang na magkaroon sila ng katapatan sa gobyerno. Okay? Is that clear? Yes, sir. So that is treason. Let us proceed to Article 115. And that is conspiracy and proposal to commit treason. Okay. Basic is the rule that conspiracy and proposal is not punishable. Sabi ng Article 8 nyo sa Revised Penal Code, Book 1, unless otherwise provides. Meaning to say, ang, ang conspiracy at proposal ay hindi yan punishable because they are not a crime. They are just only a manner on how to commit a crime. Example, si A tsaka si B Nag-usap. Sabi nila, mango-hold up sila ng bangko bukas. Here comes now P, police officer. Overheard the conversation between A and B and immediately arrested A and B. In Tagalog, nag-usap daw si A tsaka si B. Mango-hold up sila bukas. Narinig ni P. Tinawa ni P dahil pulis siya, inaresto kagad. Question. 
is the arrest of P valid? Tama ba yung ginawa ni P sa pag-arresto kay A and B? The answer for that is no. Because conspiracy and proposal is not punishable unless otherwise provided by law. Ano yung sinasabi ng unless otherwise provided by law? Ito na yung very good example doon. Yung Article 115 na kung saan kahit conspiracy and proposal to commit treason pa lang, punishable na kagad yan. Example, si A tsaka si B nag-uusap. Sabi ni A tsaka ni B, pare ang galing, successful yung ginawa nating treason kahapon. Ang galing-galing natin. Ang sarap sa pakiramdam na magtaksil sa bansa natin. Okay? Here comes now P. Overheard the statement between A and B. Immediately arrested A and B. Question. Liable po ba si A and B sa crime of conspiracy and proposal to commit treason under Article 115? What do you think so? Yes or no? The answer for that is no. Why? Because Article 115 is fixed of conspiracy and proposal only. To what? To commit. Meaning to say, in Tagalog, gagawin pa lang yung alin, yung treason. Ano ba yung binigay ko sa sample ko? Tapos na po yung treason. Consummated na yung treason. Nagawa na. Kaya nga sabi di ba ni A tsaka ni B, pare, ang galing ng treason natin kahapon. Okay? So dahil tapos na yung treason, wala na pong conspiracy yung proposal to commit treason. So meaning to say, sir, hindi po liable si A tsaka si B. The answer for that is no. Liable pa rin po sila. Hindi po sa Article 115, but to Article 114. And that is treason. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So let us proceed to the next one. Article 116. Oops, by the way, two-witness rule does not apply to Article 115. Bigyan ko po kayo ng sample. Si A tsaka si B, nag-uusap. Pare, bukas ha, mag-commit tayo ng treason. Puntahan mo si Canestor tsaka si Caberto. Ayain mo sila. Lalaban tayo sa gobyerno ng Pilipinas habang may gera between Philippines and China. Nag-agree naman sila. Here comes now P. Overheard their conversation and immediately arrested A and B. During trial, it is only P who testify against A and B. Ang Tagalog, si P lang daw po ang nagtestigo laban kay A and B for the crime of Article 115, Conspiracy and Proposal to Commit Prison. Question. Liable po ba sa A and B sa Article 115? The answer for that is yes. Kasi magkukumit pa lang sila ng treason. But the second question is, can we convict them? Convict, can we convict them for the crime of Article 115 on the basis of sole testimony of P, na police officer? Ibig sabihin, pwede ba natin sila ipakulong, ipakonvict? Gamit lamang yung, uh, yung testimony ni P. The correct answer for that is yes. Why? Because two-witness rule does not apply to Article 100, Article 115. Because two-witness rule is only applicable to Article 114, which is treason, and not to Article 115, which is conspiracy and proposal to commit treason. Let us proceed now to Article 116. On its title, makikita mo na kagad kung ano yung pinapanish dito. Misprision of treason. Ibig sabihin, meron daw treason. Pag prison, pinakulong mo. Pero dahil may prefix na miss, definitely hindi mo raw pinakulong. Tama? Yes. Pero, please take note the word treason. Tignan po natin. Here are the elements. Okay? Okay. Kung kanina sa Article 114, pwede yan makumit ng Filipino or a resident alien. Pagdating sa Article 
it can be committed only by a Filipino, not by a foreigner. So, liwanag po, tayo rito sa first amendment. Now, ano yung sinabi ko sa inyo? Misprision, hindi mo pinakulong. Why? Because he conceal, tinago mo, or does not disclose it. Hindi mo sinabi, hindi ka nagsumbong. Hindi wala kang ginawa. Okay? You may be held liable for misprision of reason. But, let us now apply in, in this example. In the previous example given, A and B, having the conversation, sabi nila, pare, ang galing ng treason natin kahapon. Congratulations. Ang sarap sa pakiramdam na magtaksil sa sariling bansa natin habang may gera na kung saan involved ang Pilipinas. Okay? Here comes now X, private individual. Narinig po niya yung conversation between A and B. Wala po siyang ginawa. Question. What is the Dito muna tayo sa sample na to. Question. What is the crime committed between A and B? Is that treason or conspiracy and proposal to commit treason? The correct answer for that is, dahil tapos na yung treason, they are no longer liable for Article 115, but they are liable for treason. Tapos na yung treason eh. But now the question is, in relation to Article 116, Is X the private individual who overheard the conversation between A and B liable for Article 116 or misprision of treason? What do you think is the answer? The correct answer for that is no. Hindi po liable si X. Bakit hindi siya liable? Because ang pinapanish po sa misprision of treason is knowledge of any conspiracy meaning to say article 116 speaks of article 115 and not article 115 in the given scenario dahil tapos na po yung treason hindi ka na po diyan liable for misprision of treason liable si A and B for treason but you are not liable for misprision of Treason. Bakit ganun, sir? Why? Bakit ba meron tayong Article 115 at Article 116? Ang purpose kasi, bakit merong Article 115 and Article 116 ay dahil di magkakaroon ng Article 117 kung walang 15 at 16. Hindi po ganun niya. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, kaya po merong Article 115 conspiracy and proposal to commit treason and Article 116 misprision of treason ay para mapigilan yung pag-commit ng treason, ma-prevent yung pag-commit ng treason. Kaya natin ipapanish. Pero kung na-commit na yung treason, mag-focus na lang tayo sa Article 115. Hindi na tayo magiging liable sa Article 115 at Article 115. 16. Is that clear? So with that, thank you very much for your listening. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And disclaimer lang po, for academic discussion lang po ito, so yung mga sample po, wala po yung intention. Okay? So that is just only for educational purposes.